Ciao, sin. Ciao, sin. Kai, sin. That thing. <laughs> that thing. <laughs> Meet the Ciao, sin. Kai, sin. CPU. <laughs> Look, I'm trying my best, okay? <laughs> this is a real fascinating one, ladies and gentlemen. This is not made by AMD or Intel, obviously, because they wouldn't have called it that, but supposedly, it is x86 compatible? It is an x86 core based on some Western designed products, I believe. So would it be fair to call it a ripoff x86 CPU? No, I don't think so. So what is it then? I guess we'll have to find out. After this message from our sponsor. Ting is a customer focused mobile provider and wants to help you save money by getting you to pay for only the mobile data you use. Get $50 in Ting credit at the link in the video description when you sign up. Where do you want to start on this? Should we boot it up first? Should we take the cooler off and have a look at it first? I like, think we should have a look at it first and see what we're dealing with. All right, you got regular DDR4 memory. Is this single channel, dual channel? I believe that's... Uh, do you know? <laughs> I think it's dual channel. It may not be. What's remarkable about it is how unremarkable it is. 24 pin power, four pin CPU connector, got your regular PWM fan connectors, PCI Express, uh, M.2, like it's... It, it's it's got all the modern features I I would expect just in like a, a a slightly larger than ITX I forget what this is called it, it's not DTX because it's three slots but it's just a bit of a weird uh, you know Frankenstein form factor that's the most bizarre thing about it it's just like a normal looking motherboard even the I O I would describe as like perfectly reasonable yeah like it's kind of a lower end I O kind of thing yeah. you've got the serial port the VGA port but yeah. that's actually useful in industrial environments it's even got a parallel port if you want to plug in like a, a ribbon cable go get hook up that dot matrix dot matrix or like uh, SCADA HMIs and stuff there's nothing about it on the surface to indicate that this is anything other than a normal computer until whoa -ho -ho! that's the Zhao Xin Kai Xin there are a few things that we can tell immediately about the HX002EA, was it? Yes. One is that it has onboard graphics because clearly this VGA and HDMI port need to be powered by something. Two, all of its I.O. appears to be built directly into the CPU itself because since this is a very, very simple PCB, we can go straight from the CPU to the PCI Express lots, dead straight line, same for the RAM. Uh, there, there appears to be no additional controller or like North Bridge or South Bridge or anything like that on the motherboard. What can you tell us about the specs of this chip? Like, is it single core, dual core? What frequency does it run at? What do this... we know about it? This is an 8-core. Really? At 2.7 gigahertz. It is the Kaixian uh, KXU6780A. And it's based on um, VIA's ISEA core. Really? So this has something to do with VIA then? They've managed to add a bunch of different features, including China's uh, homegrown hashing algorithm, SM3 and SM4, as well as increasing the IPC by 25% and then another, I think, 2X or something like that. It's pretty crazy. They've added a S3 processing core for the GPU, which I, mean, I don't know if you remember S3, but they used to be kind of a big deal before they kind of faded away. Nothing that impressive today probably, but I guess we'll see. Yeah. This could, I mean, they have an actual x86 license then. Yeah. Through VIA? Yeah. So this could actually just like be plug and play? This is, this is crazy town. Of course it has perfectly normal HD audio. Everything about it is just so normal. That's what's tripping me out here. Not only that, but did you notice the uh, mounting for the CPU cooler? Oh yeah, I noticed that they're using an Intel um, yeah. an Intel spec backplate, but just there's no holes for it to screw on the socket mount because there's no socket. Yeah, there's adhesive on that backplate. I actually uh, installed it earlier on. But theoretically, you could install any LGA11 5X cooler on this thing then, couldn't you? Theoretically, but not practically because of the height of the CPU die. No. Oh. There's a bank of capacitors here oh. that interferes directly. It just barely clears them. Uh, okay, there we go. Biosoft. Biosoft. Holy sh So I'm just windowsing right now. I'm running 60 hertz 4K with my Xin C960 series GPU at 400 megahertz, 10-bit DAC. It's worth mentioning that in order to get the graphics to work, 
I actually had to go and uh, dig up a driver from HP's website. HP actually has a micro PC that uh, runs on the Jiaoxin architecture. What? They do not. They do. Really? Mm -hmm. Like for sale in China or? I think it's for sale in China. What's task manager gonna look like? Completely normal. Eight cores, no SMT, so eight threads. Memory is just showing up real normal, like 2133 megahertz. We weren't able to get into the BIOS, so I don't even know if we can adjust that. Uh, we can get into the BIOS. This is actually the uh, UEFI installation of Windows, so we should be able to reboot into uh, startup settings and get there. Powered by that, <laughs> codename Wu Dao Ku. 28 nanometer. That's not correct, actually. Really? This what is should it? be the uh, Lugia. Uh, yeah, what he said. It should also be 16 nanometer. 16 nanometer? The CPU ID is not reporting correctly in hardware info. It also says single channel memory, so maybe that's not right either. It's not just any 16 nanometer either, it's TSMC's FinFET. So this is like damn near cutting edge. More sort or less. I mean, yeah, like not quite, but it's not far off either. <laughs> this thing, does it, does, like, is it good? I don't know. Okay. Should probably throw it up against some Cinebench, sure. maybe. All right, all right, all right. We're gonna head up Cinebench for a second. They claim that it competes with the Core i5-7400. Uh, Shut up. Oh, CPU-Z seems to have a better idea of what's going on here. 16 nanometer socket, 1548, turboing up to 2.7 here, I saw that. Whoa, that graphics core though. So look, I can actually move the mouse around here, but it's like, just don't drag in the window. This thing just trips me out so hard. So it does have some sort of, something that reports as a chipset, the KX6000. That's actually the CPU. So I believe it's all an SOC. CPU-Z knows it's dual channel memory. So let's fire up GPU-Z. Uh, okay, so you just thought it was funny for me to open up GPU-Z and have it be completely blank? It's not funny, it's what it thinks the card is. It, there's nothing in here. <laughs> it has no idea. It can't even, it doesn't even know that there's a GPU in there. Even when it had the Microsoft Basic Display Adapter Driver, it didn't know. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Cinebench R20. Eight cores. Eight cores, eight threads. It's working. It's doing something. It's not even terribly slow, as far as I can tell. Don't quote me on that, though. Still wrapping my brain around this one, ladies and gentlemen. No, it does seem slow. This seems slow. This has got to be slow. I'm pretty sure this is slow. Don't spoil it. Don't spoil it. Well, I was just going to say that one thing that Centaur Technologies uh, cores really kind of emphasized was the kind of uh, performance that their clientele needed and so just making it graphic yeah like adequate performance for certain workloads so their cores have generally been very simple and very small and consequently also sip very little power oh uh lttstore.com by the way all colors in stock it's done 925 points for context i have a ivy bridge core i5 though that's a quad core at about a thousand to be fair it's probably fine for what they want to use it for. Let's game on it. Okay. Oh, you're, you're not even gonna try the onboard? Oh, come on, I couldn't drag a window around. I'm not, no, I'm not even gonna, do you want me to try it? <sighs> it's a nothing burger, it doesn't work. Let's see if it just picks up this GPU right away and uh, outputs to it. And it immediately worked. Time to benchmark this puppy. Oh yeah, look at that. It passes the window dragging around the screen test with flying colors. <laughs> Let's fire up some CSGO here, ladies and gentlemen. The board that we got from Taobao, we paid about 617 US dollars. It's not cheap. <laughs> I thought that's the point of like Chinese knockoff stuff. Oh, Linus, what? that's not the point. The Chinese government has set a target to reduce its uh, consumption or use, I guess, of yeah. uh, hardware and software made by external vendors by 2022. And this is a drop-in replacement. But it's so expensive. Well, you gotta look at it from the perspective of where they were. Just like four years ago, these cores were way slower and they were basically just modified Isaiah cores. So like in kind of the trajectory they're on, it could be a lot better very soon. But can they game as long as they're not a kid and it's not bedtime?
30 FPS in that, in that CS go right there. More like CS slow. Oh, wow, yeah, this does not run well. As soon as the scene, you know what, hold on a second, I wanna get a smoke. Is this 4K? Uh, I do believe it is running at 4K, but with an RTX 28, oh, it's 1080! <laughs> oh, I forgot I said a full screen 1080 startup option. <laughs> That's terrible! Okay, how bad is the smoke gonna kill me here? Oh, not too bad, not too bad. It's still getting 30, 40 FPS. Oh, I'm getting shot though. How are they even seeing me? Ah! Oh wow, those, those frame drops though. Oh no. No, so close! What? Okay, so I'm getting like 200 FPS right now. I guess it's the game Wait, logic. Does it seem to be getting better? Like 40 here. No, it's not getting, it's not getting better. Walk faster, dance. So there you have it. It sucks and it's overpriced, but it doesn't suck that much. And if it follows the same trend as other technology, the price shouldn't stay that high for long. Now all that remains is for us to check out some of the other options that China has to reduce its dependency on Western technology. Make sure you are subscribed because one of them is like not x86 at all. One of them tries to emulate it, I think. We got a, we got a whole bunch of crazy stuff off Taobao, so it's gonna be freaking awesome over the next little bit. Almost as awesome as my segues to our sponsors. Like, Ting does mobile phone service differently. There's no contracts, no overage fees, and no other carrier tricks. You just pay a fair price for the talk, text, and data that you actually use. It's especially great if you use your data really sporadically, like if you're working from home sometimes and you don't need it, or you're in the office other times. You can set alerts for each device in your account to keep your usage in check. They've got nationwide LTE coverage using T-Mobile, Sprint, and Verizon. And almost any phone will work with Ting, from that ancient Motorola Razor sitting in your basement to the latest iPhone 11 series. So check your phone's compatibility at linus.ting.com and when you sign up, you will get $50 in credit towards your account. If you guys enjoyed this video, maybe check out, uh, oh, check out the crazy Chinese motherboard that I, uh, that I fired up a little while ago that had a graphics card baked into it, like a GeForce one, like a real one. It's trippy.